Hey guys, I'm Eintje and I'm slowly moving up in the YouTube world. I got asked by Elik Light if I wanted to test and review one of their bikes, the Tank Roll. Sure, it doesn't look like a bike I would usually ride, but hey, it also looks like a bike that can be fun. So I agreed and here it is. Turned out the bike isn't made for bike park rides or steep enduro trails. It's more catered towards beginners. Okay, I got myself an absolute beginner, my mom, to also test the bike. Of course, I have to see if the bike can get off the ground and handle some jumps. So that will be the first thing I do, after the intro. Is dit leuk? In order to get some airtime, I went to my local dirt jumps. They start relatively small and go to decent sized gap jumps. I've done these jumps hundreds of times across my other bikes, so I know them by heart by now. Nonetheless, it took me quite a few runs to get used to the bike. The tank roll is a budget e-bike. It only costs 1200 euros and sure it is a tank. The I say my was already on the heavy side, this one weighs even 4 kilos more, for a total of 28 kilos. Now the weight has its advantages as well as disadvantages. One of those advantages is the stability in the air. So this should be the place where the tank can shine. The scary thing and the reason why it took me so many runs isn't the weight, it's the weight distribution. This bike has the motor in the back wheel, changing the balance a lot compared to mid motorbikes. Holy shit, this will raar. At one point I switched to my hardtail to feel the difference. I almost went over the bars. So I went back to the tank crawl and stayed with that bike for the session. After some time I started to nail the table jumps, time to hit the drop. Normally I go straight for the big one, I have to admit I was a bit scared so I went for the small one. That wasn't even too bad. The scariest thing are the brakes. The bike has 160mm mechanical disc brakes and looking at the specs of the bike I assumed this would become an issue. Strangely enough they didn't feel that underpowered. The issue was the four finger braking required, while jumping you want to hold onto your bars also requiring your fingers. This meant that after landing, I first had to move my fingers to the levers before I could start braking. Anyway, I was slowly hitting more and more features, time to hit the big gap jump. Again, a jump I've done so many times was all of a sudden scary again. It took me a couple of run-ups and then hitting the smaller option first, before I finally went for it. At this point I started to get comfortable with the bike and now I have to say, the bike jumps just fine. I really expected this to be way worse. Sure, it takes some time to getting used to, but once you're used to the weight distribution, it can handle all the entry level jumps. The stability in the air and the comfort of the fat tires might even provide a bit of confidence for beginners. Time to move on to a typical Dutch cross country lap. You can get more beginner level mountain biking than that. A few short climbs and a lot of cornering. Mostly berms though. First I had the absolute beginner rider lap. Before I gave it a try myself. We both came to the same conclusions, more or less. The first thing that really stood out was the motor. The power was plentiful, the bike had no issues with the small climbs. One issue we both noticed was the moment of engagement. The bike is pretty slow to both engage and disengage. The first one you can easily compensate for by just starting to pedal a bit earlier. However, when it comes to disengaging it's a bit more tricky. When you stop pedaling because you want to make a turn and the bike still pushes you forwards, this led to some missed turns for both of us. One advantage of the motor being in the back wheel is it doesn't affect the drivetrain. Even in the wrong gear you can put in the power and then shift to the right gear. The bike has only 7 gears, however combined with an assistance it seems to be plentiful. The shifter is a bit, well, let's say it an odd choice. I get that on a budget bike every component has to be cheap. I don't see how a shifter on top of the bars is cheaper than one underneath. It's for a reason most bikes have the shifter on the same side of the bars as your thumb. Speaking of the bars, this brings me to the next issue I have with the bike. The bars are just too small, even to the point that my mother noticed this. Especially with a bike this heavy, you want all the leverage you can get to maneuver it around. Again, I don't really see how an 800mm bar would make the bike more expensive. So I ship the bike with a 650mm handlebar. You can always cut down the white bars if that's what you prefer. Making them wider is unfortunately not an option. Now I have to recommend anyone who buys this bike to get wider bars and a shorter stem. Basically adding 50 to 100 euros to the bike. 
Beside these issues, how was the beginner experience? The bike did give my mom confidence. She feels that the fat tires really help with cornering. They also provide some comfort. Altogether, she would rate this experience as a positive one. And how about a rider a bit above the beginner level? Well, the bike didn't disappoint me. It handled the lap more or less how I would expect from a 1200 euro e-bike. Again, it's clear that this bike takes some time to getting used to. It doesn't feel bad, just very different. So I will need some time to test it some more, on more challenging trails. At this point I was questioning myself, for what use might this bike be the weapon of choice? And then it hit me. One issue a lot of tracks face is the loose sand in dry periods. If there is a bike to handle that kind of terrain, it must be a fat tire e-bike. So I brought the tank to a trail notorious for loose sand. Hell, it even had the word dunes in the name, Lone Sand Runes Duine. One change you might have spotted already, I installed the handlebars for my hardtail. 780mm wide, let's be clear about it. This makes a huge difference to the handling of the bike, all for the better. Now I could throw the bike around like I'm used to, I would even say the bike became playful. I truly had fun during this ride. Dutch cross country laps are only fun at speed, and e-bikes are a great way to get that speed, even a budget one. I might even say this bike was more fun than the Kniva was on this particular lap. A thing that's really noticeable is the noise the bike makes, not so much the motor, that one is surprisingly quiet. The real noisemaker is the chain hitting the frame. This bike would really benefit from a chain stay protector, or even better, a clutch derailleur. How about the sand? This bike isn't a miracle worker, the loose parts are still sketchy, however, not as bad as on skinny tires. I never had any trouble following the trail. I did also attempt a few climbs a bit steeper with different success. First of all, it's important to make sure the motor engages before hitting the climb. Then the bike could go through sections other bikes will stall, for sure. Maybe you should also lower the tire pressure for this. Only I did not want to risk a flat with this bike, not at all. The amount of air that goes into the wheels is no fun for a small trail side pump. Also, I didn't bring the wrench required to remove the wheels. With this ride, I think I found a use case or two for the tank. If your main bike is an enduro, this one can be fun for cross country laps that are otherwise plain boring on the enduro rig. Or when you live in a place where the trails become too loose to ride in dry times, this bike allows you to keep riding those trails a lot longer. Before I can give my final verdict on the tank, I want to test it on some longer descents. For this I went to the cross country laps of Moke and Goosebeek. Also I removed all non-essential parts, so no more lights and fenders, and of course, the kickstand also had to go. Let me start by stating that, once again, I had a great time on the bike here, although some of the flaws were more obvious now. First of all the brakes, on sections that I was confident enough to not have my fingers on the brakes, I could really push the bike. Again, it handled pretty playful and aggressive. Only now I really noticed that brakes are just not powerful enough for one finger braking. So I switched to two finger braking at the cost of gripping strength. I feel the bike should come with better brakes. From a price perspective a set of downhill brakes is unrealistic. However, I think some low-end hydraulic brakes would already improve the bike by a lot. Even if this means the overall price goes up a bit, I think it's worth it. Brakes are so damn important for confidence. If you can trust your brakes will slow you down, you dare to go faster. Something that would truly benefit beginners. Another issue I ran in this time was dropping the chain. Sure this can happen sometimes, only now it got to the point it became really annoying. Yeah. This could be fixed by, again, a clutch derailleur, or by installing a chain guide. Unfortunately the frame has no mounting options for one. Talking about the drivetrain. Even on this lap the 7 gears turned out to be enough. I had no issues with the steepest climbs. Once the motor kicks in, it's a blast to the top. But you truly need the assistance. I don't think this bike can be ridden off-road without it. About the engage delay. On this lap I started to notice this in an unexpected way. The first one or two cranks are unsupported, therefore quite hard. Then the motor takes over and the pedaling becomes easy. 
At the end I started to feel my legs from all those short bursts of power I had to deliver. Not a big deal for me, but if you want an e-bike because you don't have the needed strength in your legs, this bike might not be the option for you. Even though the initial stroke still costs energy, overall you save a lot of energy so you can do longer and harder rides. About the range, I haven't drained the battery and the indicator on the display is all over the place. My guess would be that you can do around 750 meters of climbing on one charge. The last thing I really noticed during this ride was how much I missed the dropper seat post. Now this is a thing I can't reasonably expect for this price, however this might be a good future upgrade once you get the bike. So time to finally conclude the video and answer the big question. Can the Eleglide tank roll be fun? The answer is simple. Yes, this bike can be a lot of fun. Mountain biking is fun, and this bike can handle some low to medium level mountain biking, therefore the bike is fun. The quality isn't that bad, I think I did my best trying to break it, without success, thankfully. Everything feels solid, except for maybe the fork, but that might also be because of the flimsy look. Is it a good bike for beginners? I think this depends on the fitness of the beginner. If you lack any stamina, an e-bike is great for you. This one might be an option. If you're fit, I think you better get a non-e-bike for the same price. The bike handles a bit harder than conventional bikes, but it doesn't have to be a bad thing. Once you get used to it, the bike is just fine. <laughs> and if you ever get a better bike in the future, you'll find that everything becomes way easier. About the price. I would say the bike is worth the 1200 euros it cost, and while 1200 is ridiculously cheap for a bike, it's still a lot of money. Also keep in mind that you want to install a wider bar and maybe some other small upgrades. I can't say what's the best option for you, buying this bike or getting a second hand one or even saving up for a better bike. It greatly depends on how you intend to use the bike. This bike is a good option for someone who wants to use it occasionally, maybe you're the kind of rider who only rides it once in a while, or you want a bike for in the bad conditions, then this bike might be for you. That brings me to the next point. If this video somehow convinced you to get one, you can use the code HEINTJE on checkout and get a whopping 20 euro discount. This code works for all the Eleglide bikes, not just the tank roll. Of course, you can find a link to the site in the description. With that, I've come to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it, even if you're not at all interested in this bike. I sure had fun riding the tank and making this video. I hope to see you back for my next video. In the meantime, have fun riding. Hmm, before I say how do, you might know what's part of the XC lab of Moog. That's right, despite the bike wasn't made for bike parks, let's give it a try, shall we? I might as well use this time for a couple of thank yous. First of all to Eleglide for providing me with this bike and most of all for trusting in me. I'm new to reviewing products, I hope I did a good job. The next thanks is to Barry for riding and filming with me. And last but not least, my mom. She even wrote her own short review. I will link it in the description as well, although you might need to learn Dutch in order to understand it. Now I have one question for you. Do you want me to test this bike even more, or any other bikes or products? Please let me know in the comments, as well as any questions you might have. All that's left to say now is... How do?